I'm going to talk about the novel adaptive flywheel-based energy storage system we bring to market. So this is one of the enablers we need for future reliable and green electricity grids. What's the background? So in Germany, we face a nuclear phase out, which means that by 2022, there will be no more nuclear power plants on the grid. Globally, we have the climate deal, the Paris climate deal, which basically means that we shut down all coal-fired power plants as we have them right now in the next 35 years. Also globally, there are very, very many diesel generators running in smaller grids. These are just too expensive. Also, they produce CO2 emissions, but they're just expensive, even with oil prices as low as they are right now. So what does these generators do? Basically, these generators produce electricity, and they stabilize the grid. And grid stabilization with the generator is something that's as old as using alternating current, which is 130 years old or something. So the generator rotates, and it has a high inertia, and it rotates with the synchronized to the grid frequency. So that means when there's a bigger load coming from the grid, the generator reduces slowly its speed, takes energy out of the inertia, but stabilizes the grid that way. So in Germany, after a few seconds, primary control reserve kicks in, brings the generator back to its original rotating speed, and the grid's back at 50 hertz. The same is, uh, with demand, uh, um, the same as when there's uh, peaks within production, like solar production or wind production. The generator speeds up a little. After a few seconds, primary control power kicks in, brings it back to its operating point. So now we're replacing these generators. We bring in renewables, and these renewables do not have the inertia. They just take, in the case of solar, all the lights they can, they can get, push it into the grid, don't care what the grid is about. Same as wind. So what happens? So first thing that happens is that our grid becomes less stable. That means we face brownouts. So the light might flicker. Um, you might notice your old desktop computer restarts. You don't care because you use a laptop, so it doesn't restart. But you can imagine that industrial plants get huge problems when their control systems restart. The next thing, even worse, is a blackout. So no light at all, no computers, nothing. Well, you, right now you laugh. So the good thing is, in Europe, continental Europe, we're not facing this problem as in the next few years, next five to 10 years, maybe. Our grid is huge. It goes from Portugal up to Poland. There's many nuclear power plants in France. There's many coal-fired power plants in Poland. Nobody will turn them off in the next few years. ZA stabilize our grid, no matter how many renewables we put in here in Germany. So what changes when you go to smaller grids? Smaller grids like England, like Ireland, or Ireland grids. So in these grids, you really face hard problems. So this is the frequency curve from the UK grid from April 17, 2014. We did not pick a day which looks really bad. It's just an average day. We just selected that one. So what we see there is that the frequency is highly volatile. It goes up and down. And that's what also the grid operators saw in England. And that's why they installed a new market, a new market for grid stabilization measures. They call it enhanced frequency response. It will start begin of 2018 and should do this grid stabilization. So when I first saw that data, I thought, well, that's great. That's exactly what we developed our system for. So we see 8.4 events per 15 minutes that day. That means that a storage system needs to react 8.4 times per 15 minutes. And that's our solution. Oh, sorry, that's dynamic grid balancing. So that means we bring in spinning reserve capacity. We have voltage and frequency control. And that means voltage control. We check the voltage of the grid as well as frequency control. We go into and control the frequency. That means we can imp implement more higher shares of renewables and get an increase in power quality. That's our solution. It's a novel energy storage system. It's a worldwide, it's the first outer rotor energy storage system. It's the first adaptive flywheel system that is around. And that means that we adapt the system to the requirements of the grid. We fix power and capacity to what the grid needs. And that means that our system provides the smallest total cost of ownership. Another thing is we're a spin-off of Technical University of Darmstadt. And there have been like 30 years, many years of science, of product development, and scientific research put in that project. So another thing about the technology is, well, we use existing supply chains. It's classical mechanical engineering. That means we do not need to set up our production sites. We can order, speci or we specify parts, get them shipped to our place, assemble the system, 
put our code on the controllers, commission the system, and that's it. This is the markets we're looking at. So it's remote microgrids, it's microgrid islanding, industrial sites, and it's interconnected grids. This is our team. We're four people, or we started with four people, now we're five. We got three engineers, four and a half engineers, <laughs> I say, and one business guy. Um, this is what we have right now. This is our prototype. It's the second prototype we've set up. We're going to start, yeah, hurry up, see that. Um, a small batch series production this fall, and then we go into bigger batch series production one year later. So right now, we're looking for partners, for early adopters, partners to bring our systems into the field, as well as investors. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Henry. Okay.